Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another short interview, this time with Gunnar Stein Magnusson, who is the CEO of Expon. Uh, Gunnar, it's such a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Excited to, to see the show, and, and, and thank you for inviting me here. Perfect. Uh, maybe we can start with a round of uh, introduction. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, what uh, Exmon does? Yeah, of course. So my name is Gunnar. Uh, I am uh, CEO of Exmon. We founded the company in 2009. Uh, and then I was a software developer in a data consulting company. But we were uh, we were basically doing projects for the uh, for all, all the big companies in Iceland. And and we needed to improve data quality of those implementation implementations. And and every company in Iceland is a is an SME, almost every company. So we needed to find out a way to uh, well, to 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 have some 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 good data quality data governance uh, implementations for our clients. But everything on the market was was kind of aimed at the at the big enterprises. So therefore, we started developing uh, Xmon. Well, yeah, fifteen years back. Uh, fifteen to, years, that is impressive. Yeah, and we've been yeah slowly building that up uh, for the first years, aiming at the Icelandic market, building up a, a, a good solution in data quality and data governance for for the you know mid-sized market. Uh, and recently, we've been uh, targeting more markets. Iceland is quite tiny, <laughs> so we are we are now approaching other markets as well. You mentioned data quality and master data management as a core expertise and um, uh, offering of uh, Xbond. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the challenges uh, uh, that you see on the market when it comes to these topics, especially for the SMEs, right, as you started with those? Yeah, so, well, Data quality actually the, the actually importance of, of handling data quality in all organizations is 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 quite quite big. Uh, the bigger companies, of course, they can have all the resources required to actually do, you know, holistic approaches. You know, with data governance councils and stewards and all all that fancy fancy procedures. But the the smaller and smaller companies, the the five hundred to two thousand employees or so, they have all the same issues, but they don't really have any. They have the resources or or deep knowledge in these procedures to actually do something holistic. So the biggest challenge early on, at least, was that we had to you know educate the market that this was actually an issue they had, and you know they should you know try to to solve it somehow. But recently, most companies understand the issue. I mean, people are more data literature, data literature, and and so. So our, our current challenges are just convincing them that we are actually the solution to their issues, and that that is much an easier easier <laughs> uh, statement than, than actually having to educate the client first. So right. SMEs generally have same issues as big companies, but don't have the scale to actually respond to it. You know, uh, you know, holistically. So we had to find a way that was more practical. In these cases, so I can't really use any of the fancy words. You know, if I if I say data governance council, then the 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 buyer just says, you know, off you go. <laughs> right. So we have to, right. you know, find more the low hanging fruits. You know, you know that you know you are losing money in these processes because of this. So you know you you start there instead of actually, uh, instead of actually doing the 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 big holistic processes the procedures. Right. As um, companies are more and more in need of um, advanced analytics and AI, um, I believe that the importance of data has never been uh, bigger. And with that, of course, it's easy to forget topics like master data management and data quality. But however, they are, in my thought at least, the heart of uh, making any company as uh, data-driven as possible, right? Maybe we can talk a little bit more about the importance of uh, data quality and master data management and how do you see that in your organization? So, yeah, of course, you know, most companies are, are trying out in, in, in AI and ML and, and the bigger ones are at least, you know, having some successes there. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, of course, rely on data and, and good data. And, exactly. And 
and AI and ML just you know does the same uh, as people too, just a lot faster. So if they have bad data, they just make more errors. <laughs> so yeah, faster, you, faster, faster errors. <laughs> yeah, you get faster errors. And yes, and and often we are just solving really simple problems. That, that's the case in in most cases. Really, the low, lowest hanging fruits are somebody's onboarding a new product or a, or a new vendor or a new client. And they are missing just some key attributes. You know, they didn't create it correctly, so it's not sellable in the stores, or the e-commerce store is not, you know, in sync with the with the ERP system. You know, it, it's generally it's it's quite simple stuff we are solving in those cases. Uh, and the biggest issue there is is to spot it soon enough before it becomes a financial loss for the organization, and also. Uh, and also just to divert the cases or assign the cases to the correct people. I mean, this is more human than tech in, in many cases. Right. The actual, you know, when we implement and, and we help uh, partners implement, you know, 70% of it is human and, and, and you know, the, the culture of, of, of data quality chains. The tech part is, you know, quite easy, actually, in many cases, at least. But, but when you... I mean, you start small. Well, we try to start small. We try to get some easy wins, some some quick wins, to solve and to so something that's really easy to calculate the return on investment for the business people. We we tend to to aim to the business people instead of IT in in, in most cases. And so, when you have solved two, three, four, five issues that are really expensive for the company and the business unit, then we can actually go more holistic, and, and then we can do all the fancy stuff. The the ML and AI and, and define ownership and all that stuff. But, right. Yeah. Um, you, I believe that you already started with this, but um, let's focus a little bit more on on, uh, on that uh, data data quality, master data management in particular. So um, many organizations have either started or um, they are starting um, focusing on this area. Uh, what would be your recommendation, for example? What are the practical steps of an organization starting or um, uh, developing a program around data quality and master data management? Uh, now I'm talking for the you know the the SMEs, the, the SMEs, mid-line. right? Yes. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so where you have, I mean, of course, companies have the different maturity and data maturity. If you have somebody in house who understands data, understands the the flow of data, or how it changes over the month and over periods, or, or just through business process, then uh, we try always to start with the small, the quick wins. Something, and and the goal there is just to convince in house people that this is actually something that you know it matters to actually monitor these things and to take ownership of these things. So we are solving all the fires that happens every end of month or, or every time something happens in the business. So that's the goal there. Uh, so it always starts with those, you know, uh, these are, I mean, these are projects are maybe 20 hours, 30 hours or so. When you have that, uh, and this is just basic change management stuff that, you know, you want to, you want to have quick wins. You have, you have to, you know, you have to communicate those wins to internal people uh, to actually convince them that you know this is something you can change. Because often, in, in especially in the in the in the uh, you know in the smaller enterprises, you have people who have been there for a long time, which are you know they don't have deep knowledge in IT or, or, or data, and you really have to convince them to actually change their methods. That, that this is something right. you have to go actually go after. Therefore, we I often always start with you know on the revenue side of a business <laughs> because you can so easily calculate you know how, how much you're saving either in time or, or, or money and and then after that you have though you you present you communicate the wins then you can actually go more broader with data quality and data governance they should actually define ownership of specific process procedures ownership of specific data domains uh, design responsibilities regarding who is supposed to, you know, solve issues, you know, who, who has to be notified, informed, all that. So yeah, start easy, start quick, and and grow from there. And normally our projects are not three, four, five year uh, projects. They are normally, you know, we we work in an agile way, only doing you know one process at a time, making it perfect, and go on to the next. So we see fast results. Right. 
So it's, sometimes it, it feels like it's uh, easy to implement a new uh, process or a policy or a new technology in place, but um, it's always the hardest uh, part of the job is actually to making it stick, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the main question would be, so how do you maintain uh, the processes that you have put in place? What is your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, it's a good question. So. I mean, there are many things that 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 help you in that. I mean, it's it's measurability. That's one of it. So you really want to. Uh, so let's say you are maintaining, a, you know, order to cast process, and you want to make sure that 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 the monitoring and changes to that process is they actually stay, uh, and you know, in three months or six months. So there we we define and, and document really well the, the the process, the the controls we do, and we actually help the, our clients to set a target for data quality in that. You know, we document, you know, the importance of every step of the chain, uh, how, you know, the business impacts of failures in each case, and and how to react to those uh, issues that show up. And then the, the business unit can set targets. You know, I want you know this data to be 98% correct at this time in you know at, you know 5 days between before end of the month so if you do that you have a target where you can reach it's really easier to have it stick I'll say so i mean we, you need a champion also in house that understands data understands data quality and the importance of data quality uh, and they help i mean the hard part about being a uh outside vendor and and of course a, a consultant as a partner as well is that you don't see the issues that crop up during daily work mm. you need somebody in-house that's actually there <laughs> when things fail on a, on a busy friday you know afternoon you know that they actually respond and know how to use these methods so you need the champion you need the measurability and and, and good documentation of it Sounds great. Um, All right. So if we can summarize, let's say, uh, this all these learnings that we had in the past five minutes or so, um, what would be your three main recommendations for any organization that is starting uh, right now, SME, of course, uh, with uh, data quality and master data management from uh, start, let's say, initiation to developing and maintaining this over time so you can actually get the value out of it, as you mentioned. Yeah, and, and this is generic for every data quality and data governance platform per se. So I would think about the culture itself. You need somebody in-house who is data literature, li- data literature, what, what yes. do you call it? Literate. <laughs> Sorry. Data literate, yes. yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Not my, my native language here. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, you want somebody who really understands the data, how it flows over time. So it might be somebody who's already there, but at least you have to pick that person out and 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 and, and you know be in a good relationship with that person. Uh, then you need to understand the importance and the actually financial impact of bad data. Somebody creates a bad record, you have to understand the, how much it costs you, because today most companies are doing this reactively. Somebody screams or calls. Might be a you know a coworker, might be a customer, and then you actually try to you know put a bandage on on that specific issue instead of actually go, going to the root cause and facing fixing it there. So you know measure the actually financial impact of each issue, and then do the controls, do the things automatically that you you are currently doing reactively or manually today. So you know have, have so you get more value from that specific from that data. I think, yeah, these are the three steps I would try with, start with. Right. Sounds good. So what is next for Exponent, your organization? Well, Data Innovation Summit, that's next. You know, currently in my calendar, uh, but then we are growing. We are uh, amassing partners about in Nordics and, and Europe uh, and, and, and East Europe as well, yeah. and East Europe. And now we are trying to approach new markets and, and conquer more markets than just Iceland. <laughs> right. Sounds like a great uh, task to have for the, the rest of the year. Perfect. Super yeah. good. Thank you very much for uh, taking your time today for the short interview. Thank you. Really excited to, 
to meet you in Stockholm.